Revelation chapter 3. We've been talking the last few weeks for those who have ears to hear. And let's just read verse 20 and verse 22. We'll pray and we'll dive into where we left off last week. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice, that's what we're trying to talk about. And hopefully through these last few weeks, it's helping you understand how to hear God's voice. Helping you understand some of the things that stand in the way of you hearing God's voice. And we'll continue that today. But Jesus wants us to hear His voice. How many of you can see that in this verse? It's His desire. He says, I'm standing at the door and, and I will come to Him and, he will, and, and, and if He'll open the door, I'll come in and sup with you and dine with you. Sounds like a great invitation. Amen? Amen? Isn't that a great invitation? How many of you know that when the Lord prepares the supper, when the Lord prepares the meal, it's perfect? You can commune with God on a regular basis every day. That's awesome. Verse 22. This is where we get the title of the message, and it's all through the Gospels. Jesus will say something, and then he comes and he says, If you have an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Father, I pray for this message today, and I pray that as we... Um, open up this next that you give us an ear to hear. And let our hearts be sensitive, Lord, because I know that in the midst of everything that's going on, you're still working. You're still speaking. You're still teaching. And Father, I pray that today's word is going to open eyes, open hearts. Give us a greater understanding of how to hear your voice. And Lord, I, I'm believing that the truth will make us free. I'm believing that you're going to point out areas of our life maybe that we have allowed to stand in the way of fully hearing your voice. Let your will be done today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll do this because I have it in the projector, but uh, let's just do as review. We laid the groundwork, and there were some things that I was wanting to accomplish and as an introductory lesson. That introductory lesson was simply this. Satan is speaking also. So in order for us to understand how to hear the voice of the Lord, in order for us to... Um, lay aside every weight and every sin that besets us and ensnares us and holds us back, we have to understand that Satan also speaks. The difference between the Lord speaking and Satan speaking is Revelation 3 says that the Lord gives the invitation, but we've got to respond. The Lord doesn't knock the door down. We have to be willing. We have to submit. The Bible says that if we draw near to the Lord in the book of James, then he draws near to us. The thing with Satan, though, is Satan is forceful. Satan forces his words on us. He, he, whether we like it or not, he's going to speak to us. He's going to speak to our mind and our emotions. He's going to lie to us. And Satan is speaking through all different forms right now. This week, it really I was listening to a message this week, and it really hit me hard about how Satan is the prince and the power of the air. He's using the Internet. He's using television. He's using all these different mediums to do his work. Because he's the prince and the power of the air and, and having a discussion with one of our leaders before church and I said 20 years ago before really the internet, really before social media, you know, it just, things just seem so different in the atmosphere. Can, how many can feel that? Can you feel a difference in the atmosphere? Man. Now it's, it's like when we open up the airways, when we open up all these cell signals and we open up the internet and Wi-Fi, it, it's like all these fearful voices, all these messengers are able to further the message of the world and the message of not the kingdom, but man. And, and I think that Satan is using that to uh, amplify his message. Amen. And so Satan is speaking, but when he does speak, what he does is he questions what God has told us. You ever been in church and you leave church and all of a sudden you hear this voice? that says, did you really hear from the Lord today? Did you really receive from the Lord during that worship service? Did you really receive? And then misdirection. The enemy's always there to try to misdirect you. He's always there to try to show you another path to get you off of your path of purpose. And then fear. We sung about that this morning. He's always going to speak in fear. And we saw that in the Gospels. We went into our first lesson, and the first lesson was dealing with a huge hindrance, and that huge hindrance is sin. If we have sin in our lives, if we're living in sin, it's going to be hard to hear the voice of God clearly. And for those that want direction, if we want His leading voice, we use the example in the book of Isaiah, if we want God's leading voice, we've got to first receive His purging voice. Because the Lord will always purge out everything in our life 
that is hindering our relationship with him so he can lead us and guide us. And the problem we make uh, as people is it seems like the only time we seek the Lord and we want to hear his voice is when we need direction. But we're not seeking the Lord and saying, oh God, everything in me that doesn't glorify you, purge it. And so we've got to make sure that we get the sin out. We've got to be able to lay it before the Lord. And so that was our first lesson. Then we got into lesson two, and lesson two was obedience brings further direction. And we talked about that last week. The life of Abraham. As Abraham obeyed the Lord, he was able to get to different levels in his walk with the Lord. He finally reached a place in his life that a very, very tough challenge was given to him to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. And we know the story, and we talked about that last week. But it was his obedience that brought further direction in his life. Well, today I want to break down lesson two just a little bit. And there's five things I want to talk about as we break this down today. And as we, as we look at this, and if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one of these points. But I, I want to talk about some of the, the common things in our life that if we don't watch it, if we let it get in the way, it's going to hinder our ability to hear from the Lord. You know, it's amazing. And I've been a pastor for a while, and, and I hear a lot of people say, how come I, I can't hear God's voice? Well... Here's some hindrances. Number one, we have a fallen human nature. Even though we're led in the Spirit, we still live in the flesh, right? I mean, if you dropped a brick on your foot right now, would it hurt? Come on, who's with me? Would it hurt? You still live in a body. How many of you still have emotions? We get sad. We get fearful, right? We have emotions. We get hurt. We get angry. Oh, no, not me. Oh, knock that halo off. I know you get angry. We all get angry. So all of us have these emotions, okay? It's our human nature. We can't get away from it. The only time you're going to get away from your body is when you're absent from the body, and that's when you're going to be present with the Lord. Amen. So we've got to carry this earthen vessel around. And so that's, a, that's one of our hindrances. We've got this fall in human nature. This is the reason why we're dealing with everything we're dealing with in our world right now is because of that fall in human nature. I was telling somebody before church, I said, even the first kids that were born to Adam and Eve... Cain killed his own brother. They had the same mom, the same dad. Cain killed his own brother. So of course we're going to see all this that's happening around our nation and around our world right now with all this murder and all this, this hate. If the first kid's ever born, if one brother killed the other, it's part of that human nature. And so our fallen human nature, poor listening habits, we'll talk about this. The world that's around us, we got to live in the world. We get up every day and we try to hear the voice of God. And I'm learning this. I'm learning this. When I get up in the morning, I don't turn the TV on anymore. Yeah, right. And um, especially on Sunday mornings, I won't turn the TV on on Sunday mornings I, I, because i got to hear God's voice. I need His direction. I need to know what the Lord is speaking to me because the world around us does a great job in trying to contradict what we're hearing from the Lord or to try to hinder our ability to hear from the Lord. Am I right? Come on, you can get up in the morning and you can pray and you can seek the Lord. And then when you go to your job, it's, it's like the enemy sends somebody your way right. to sow a word into your heart or say something to you that either gets you upset or it contradicts what the Lord was trying to speak to you that morning. It's the world that we live in. The devil. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him because I've already addressed that in an earlier lesson. But the devil is, is one of those hindrances that we've got to deal with. And then our human tendency to procrastinate. No. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3 We've got this in the computer Let's look at this I want to break these three verses down And I brethren could not speak to you As spiritual but as carnal Even as babes in Christ Now I want us to look at this Because the Lord dealt with me this week That we're dealing about this first point here About the fact that we've got this fallen human nature Okay I'm going to throw it out here, and I don't want anybody to be a hater on me by saying this. I'm just telling you the truth. we got too many spiritual babies in church. Man. And uh, any of you, um, <clears throat> Aaron, you know about this, right? Because you got a new baby in your house, right? Dale's going to know about this here in the next few days. We're going to have a new baby in the house. Those little babies don't understand adult talk, do they? That's right. Am I right? It has to be taught. They have to learn. And so the problem with us in the church is because we have not grown in our own personal walk with the Lord, we hear kingdom speech and don't understand it. 
We hear things that are far above our spiritual education, our spiritual understanding, our spiritual maturity. We don't understand it. And if we're going to navigate through the seasons we're living in today, if we're going to grow, we have got to learn how to go from the milk to the meat. I heard a minister this week, he said, and the Lord revealed to him, he said, for those who were on the meat before the pandemic, they're surviving a whole lot better. But for those who stayed on the milk, who would not go to the meat, they're having a harder time in this pandemic. And maybe we didn't understand it before we entered it, but I'll tell you what, it's sure revealing itself the longer we're in this. Amen. There's a kingdom language that God is trying to speak to the church. And for those who have an ear to hear, He's speaking, but are you listening? And the reason why you might not understand is you can't articulate what God's trying to say. Your maturity level's not there yet. It's kind of like that old Charlie Brown cartoon and when you remember when the kids would be at school and the teacher would speak and you'd hear wah, 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 wah. They just got me that and that's that's exactly what, it's not the fact that God's not speaking and God's not wanting to reveal. It's your level of maturity just isn't there yet. There's a lot of things when I first got saved, even those first few years when I got saved, I, I went back sometimes and I've reread books that I read when I first got saved and was in that discipleship period where I would re-listen to messages. 20 years ago, I didn't really understand it because my maturity level wasn't at that place yet. But now I can because I'm more mature. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing more meat in my spiritual diet and I'm combining not only what the Word is telling me or what the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm combining it with experience. And it takes a while to get there. Amen. How many of y'all with me? Your level of maturity is simply based on how much of God's Word you understand and apply to your life. Just because you've been saved for 20 years, you might not be 20 years in the Spirit. You might still be in infancy because you have not gotten in the Word. You've not matured. Let's keep reading verse 2. Does that make sense today? Amen. And so the Apostle Paul is coming back to the church here and he's saying, Listen, I would love to come to you and say some really deep things. I would love to communicate to you uh, kingdom language. I would love to communicate things that are going to help you grow and get through what you're dealing with. But I can't. I, when I come, I got to talk to you now as babes in Christ all over again. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. There's a terminology I've heard sometimes through the years, and I've used it, and I'll use it again today. Sometimes people choke on the word. And the reason why is because they're just not in a place to be able to, to, to swallow it and digest it. Um, our dog Cosby is a burger. He is, he's a rascal. He's nine years old now and he still acts like he's a puppy. And we have to shut the door to every room in our home and we can't let anything be on our counters or within reach of him. And not just He's, you know, he's real skinny, so he's real long when he stretches out, but he jumps. He jumps like a kangaroo. And, and, and so we got to make sure nothing is out. Well, if we forget, there was one day this week, Kevin went to football practice, and, and he didn't shut the door all the way. And it didn't, you know, lap. So Cosby got up there and got in his trash that's in his room and got in. And, and when I came home after prayer, before he got out of football practice, I went up there and there was wrappers everywhere and there was trash everywhere. And then there was one day, I think it was yesterday, he got into Joey's bag. There was no food in it, but he was looking for food. You know, and he's chewed up so many things. But in the middle of the night, um, about three in the morning, I'm in bed and I hear Cosby at the end of the bed and he's going, oh, 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 oh. How many of you ever had a dog? You know what that sound is. How many of you know what that sound is? Especially at three in the morning, you know what that sound is, right? I mean, let me see the hands of those. You know, you know that sound, don't you? And of course, it's amazing how awake you get in the morning when you hear that sound. Because here's the option. Vomit on my bed or getting up and, it, you know, I don't know. You know Chariots of Fire, that old movie from like 40 years ago. Everything goes into slow motion. It caused me to and it was like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the cover's flat. No! 
I jump off the bed, I grab him by his collar, I'm dragging him. I mean, if, there, if I was able to see a video rewind of that, he, was, he probably didn't even have his feet on the ground. I've got his collar, he's probably doing this now. And I'm working my way down the hallway, and I'm going through the dining room, and I'm making my way to the back door, and then I've got to unlock the door, and then the, the de- and I've got to open it, and, and just in time. And hasn't always been successful. There's a lot of times he doesn't make it. Now, if he, if he vomits on the wood floor, that's okay. Cleans up good, but it's the carpet. Ugh, I don't want him on the bed. No. So he works his way outside, and he's on the porch, and he's back there, and he, oh, he vomits up something that he got into that he couldn't digest. There was like a white wrapper. I don't know what was in it. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do surgery on it. I didn't want to investigate. And I don't know what it was. And I think we thought we knew it was. It. Well, the reason why is because his digestive system. You understand, our dog, he doesn't chew things. He eats it whole. Okay? He's eaten my watches. He's eaten Jovi's watches. And we're all adults in here. And then he'll, he'll poop out the metal watch. But he'll eat the leather strap. Yeah, that watch said, bye-bye. I'm not digging that out of that pile. He'll eat that stuff. But see, his body won't digest it. And so he threw it up. Well, I want you to spiritualize that. And I want you to understand but if you're trying to eat something beyond your level of maturity, if you're trying to digest meat, and I'm telling you, I, I, I'm being honest with you today, I think there were too many Christians before this pandemic hit who for years were coasting, never went to a deeper level in their walk with the Lord, have been able to exist for years off milk. And you understand that that when we grow, we have to transition from milk to meat. If we don't, that our muscles and our bones and our bodies don't grow and develop the way they need to grow and develop. You've got to make that transition from the milk to the meat. But what happens is we come to church and we hear a heavy word. And there's a heavy, every once in a while there's a heavy word preached here, right? Every once in a while. And so if you've stayed on the milk, God's trying to say something deep to the church, or at least our church, or the church universally. And because we've not transitioned from the milk to the meat, we just regurgitate it. We just throw it back up. Why? Because we are not at a place that we can understand and receive it. Does that make sense? And Paul comes back, and, and what happened was Paul showed up, gave them some milk, and they all threw, or meat, and they all threw it up. And Paul had to take a step back and he was like, man, I'd love to give you some meat because the church has got work to do, but now I've got to come back and give you milk again because you can't handle it. He says, I fed you with milk, but not with meat. Hitherto, you weren't able to bear it. You couldn't digest it. You were throwing it up. Verse 3. And this is what he says. He says, you're carnal. So Paul knew the fruit of their life, listen to me, the fruit of your life will reveal the spiritual food you've been eating. If you've been eating meat, the fruit of your life will be spiritual. If the fruit of your life is carnal, you've been on milk. Come on, who's with me? And God is trying to tell the church in this hour, with everything that's happening in the world, God is trying to say, it's time for the meat. It's time for the church to rise up in this hour. It's time for us to walk in the anointing that God's given to us. It's time for us to walk in revelation knowledge. It's time for us to get to this place, but we've got to make that transition. And the only way we can see if we're there yet is look at our lives. Are we carnal or are we spiritual? Paul said, you're carnal. I'm evaluating. Paul's the overseer, and he's saying, I see envy, I see strife, I see division. You're carnal, and you're walking as man. Is this making any sense? And so this, this fallen human nature will always be a hindrance to us in our walk with the Lord. Babe, in, in my briefcase is my phone. I've got something I want to read off of that, if you could hand that to me. 
Turn to Romans chapter 7. I think that's our next scripture. And I want us to look at Romans chapter 7, verse 14. How many is here with me today? Amen. See, when we got saved, we understand that we were born in sin. We understood that when we became born again, we had to learn a total different way of living. We had to understand the ways of the kingdom of God. And we had to, to go through that season of sanctification, right? Because God's ways aren't our ways, amen? But because we cut this fallen human nature that's always there with us, if we feed our carnal nature, that will be the dominant part of what we listen to and how we respond. But if we feed our spirit, our spirit will be the dominant part of how we respond to life and what we choose to listen to. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, uh, now the, the King James, I've got the King James, I want to read for time's sake, I'm, I'm going to jump right into the Amplified because the Apostle, I, I love the way that this is broken down. The, the Apostle Paul says in verse 14, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, worldly, self-reliant, carnal, and unspiritual. And so the Apostle Paul is, is bringing this distinction of his life. I want to look up something too that's in my Bible here real quick. Um, I've got some definitions. So Paul comes in and he says, We know that the law is spiritual, verse 14, but I am a creature of the flesh. Well, when we go back to, just leave that on the, on the screen, but when we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, when Paul says, I wanted to speak as spiritual, the word spiritual there means supernatural or regenerated. So Paul is saying, I want to give you supernatural understanding, but I can't do it because you're still walking in the natural. And when you look at the word carnal there in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, it means unregenerated or fleshly. So Paul is saying, I can't really use kingdom terminology. i got I to gotta come back with milk terminology, with fleshly, because you, you, you're not understanding what I'm trying to say. Because he says there's still babes in Christ. Now the word babes there means infant, simple-minded, or immature. And even though God wants to transition us from that. But Paul comes in in Romans chapter 7, and really, I, I love this portion of Scripture because it speaks about the battle all of us face every day. And that's our flesh. That our flesh fights against our spirit and our spirit against our flesh. And if we don't want to submit our flesh to the spirit, our flesh is going to be the dominant part of what we listen to and how we respond. And Paul says, I'm a creature of the flesh. I'm carnal. Sold into slavery to sin. Verse 15, for I do not understand my own actions. I'm baffled and I'm bewildered at them. I do not practice what I want to do, but I'm doing the very thing I hate, yielding to my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. Let me say this. All of us in here, if we allow our human nature to control our lives, we're capable of anything. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I know who I was without Christ. Amen. I wasn't, I wasn't a good person to be around. Some of you are like, you're not a good person to be around that. You say, well, well, you wouldn't have wanted to see sin for this. <laughs> and see, we got to understand that when we stop walking in the Spirit, that nature that we have will take over. When people backslide, Scripture says that the strong man goes to the wilderness, and when the strong man comes back, if we turn our back on the Lord, it says that the strong man it becomes seven times more powerful because he brings demons seven times more powerful than him back. And so what happens is those weaknesses we had before we came to know the Lord, they get worse because our carnal nature is now running our life again. Amen? And Paul's explaining this in Romans 7. And he's saying this is the battle all of us are having to deal with. That carnal nature. And if we don't put it to death, We'll, we'll lie. Amen. We'll cheat. We'll hold grudges. We'll be bitter. We'll do a lot of things. And Paul says we can't do that. Let me keep reading. Verse 16. If I habitually do what I do not want to do, that means I agree with the law, confessing that it is good and it is morally excellent. Do you notice the wording in here? What I want to do. You know what that means? Your flesh doesn't want to obey God. So it's natural. 
You get up on Sunday morning and say, I don't want to come to church. That's natural. <laughs> that's natural. Even the pastor. There's a lot of Sunday mornings I get up. I don't want to go to church. Oh, without me, we can't have it. I guess I don't know. You don't, your flesh does not want to obey the Lord. It doesn't want to listen to the Lord. It doesn't want to forgive people. It doesn't want to sacrifice. It doesn't want to do those things. And Paul's admitting that. So if you feel that, that's okay. That's just a revealer that, you, that you're living in the flesh. However, you cannot give in to it. Amen. That's the difference. Amen. And when we're eating meat, spiritual meat, our spirit is now stronger. And when our spirit is stronger than our carnal nature, then it will overpower those desires that want to overtake us that are natural. And it's making any sense. Come on. Amen. Verse 17, so now if that is the case, then it is no longer I who do it, the disobedient thing which I despise, but the sin nature. That sin nature in me will want to override and take, even as a born again Christian. It's amazing because some people sit back and everybody wants to point their finger. Oh, I can't believe they said they were a Christian. Listen, all of us, all of us are one decision, one bad decision away from doing something stupid. All of us. It's funny because everybody wants to point their finger at others that are sinning. It's like, your sin is just different. You know, you're just, you're just able to hide it better. Amen. The old me or amen. You know, and it's funny because uh, all of us, all of us, come on, anybody in here get up in a bad mood and you didn't say some things you shouldn't have done and you sit back and it's like, well, you're not a... Christians like, yeah, you're, I'm not acting like one. You, you're right because I let my flesh handle this one. <laughs> How many of you know your flesh? Your flesh stinketh. That's the King James. Word. It's <laughs> Jovi worked for a long time with law enforcement, and and she told me she said she said uh, the dead body is like the worst stench you could ever smell, and you can't get it out of your stinks. For I know that nothing good lives in me. Verse 18. That is in my flesh. My human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. We ought to take that with us today and tell ourselves, nothing good is in who I am away from Christ. Amen. Nothing. And some of you ought to get this down. There is nothing good outside of God's will. Amen. Amen. Nothing Nothing. And if you allow your flesh to listen to what your flesh wants and you respond to it, you're always going to do something contradictory to what the will of God is. And Paul is admitting there's nothing good outside of that. But I don't understand why the Holy Spirit's telling me that. You're not called to understand. You're called to live by faith. And as long as you lay your flesh, that's why Jesus said you take up the cross every day. You've got to die out to your flesh. You've got to die out to what you want. And we got desires, don't we? Come on, how many of you? I mean, there's desire. There's things you want to do in life. There's things you want to accomplish. There's, there's professions that you want to do and, and things you want to buy and things you want to give into. And that's all part of being human. That's all part of being wrapped in the flesh. But the Bible says that if we're going to be a Christian, we, don't long, we no longer live according to that kind of way anymore. That we're spirit-led. Because the flesh will always get us in trouble. Come on. Our flesh will always get us in trouble. Do this. Say this. Watch this. Give in to this. Make this decision. And Paul's trying to make a real clear that in our flesh, our human nature, there is no good thing. Without Christ, I'm nothing. Amen. For the willingness to do good is present in me, but the doing of good is not. How many of you woke up with good intentions one day, and by the time the day was over, you was like, I blew it. I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I got up today. Come on, you get up, and you're like, this is what I'm going to do. You know, we get up, and that's when you're fresh. Your mind didn't clutter yet. I'm going to pray an hour today. I'm going to read. I'm, I'm going I'm to forgive my enemy today. And, and I'm going to eat right, and I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to hold on to this, and 
we get about an hour into our day and we get away from being in the presence of the Lord and all of a sudden you start doing things and thinking things and engaging in things and stuff. Please the Lord, and by the time the day's over, you're, you're feeling bad and condemned because you're like, that's not how I wanted this day. That's not how I envisioned it. It's because it's your flesh. For the good that I want to do, I don't do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. Verse 19. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want to do, verse 20, I'm no longer the one doing it. That is, is not me that acts, but it's that sinful nature now that's taken over. And so we see here Paul is saying, my sinful nature, my fallen human nature is holding me back. Am I making any sense? So the first thing we realize, if we could put it back to those five points again, Andrea. First thing is our human nature is a huge, huge hindrance. Secondly, poor listening happens. This is a big one because I tell you every week, I encourage you, I challenge you every week, and I tell you, don't wait until you walk in the doors of the church to think you're in a position to fully receive everything God has for you. Because in Matthew, and, and let's look at this, Andrea, let's look at this here in Matthew chapter 13. Jesus describes our hearts as being one of these four types of ground. And those of you in here that have gardens or you're farmers, you understand the soil is everything. Everything. Doesn't matter how good the seed is. If the seed is not planted on good ground, the seed will never produce. Jesus explains in Matthew chapter 13, I don't have enough time to break it down like I would want to, but in your own time, and you know what it's in some of the other Gospels, pretty well the same wording Jesus uses. He talks about a sower sowing, and he uses a parable, and then he comes back in later in the chapter and he explains it. He says the sower goes and sows the Word. Now he breaks it up and he talks about the different types of, of ground and he talks about, let's, let's jump to verse 18. Is that in the system? Matthew chapter 13, verse 18. And then we'll go to verse 18. He says, I want you to hear the parable of the soul. So here Jesus is saying, I want you to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what this parable means. Verse 19. Anyone that hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand, the wicked one is going to come and catch away that which was sown in his heart. This is the one that had a wayside. That's the first type of heart. And so you can come to church and hear some of the most anointed preaching you've ever heard. You can listen to a podcast or, or watch something on YouTube. And, and very anointed seed, good seed, that incorruptible seed. And, and, and it's going to allow you to grow. But because your heart was a wayside heart, it couldn't fully receive what it is that God had for you. You didn't prepare the soul of your heart. And Jesus said that if we refuse to let God's word penetrate our hearts, it will never produce the fruit that was intended when the seed found its way into the soil. And then Jesus goes on, verse, um, let's go to the next verse. And he says, but he that received the seed into the stony places. That's, that's, a, that's a hard heart. The same as he that hears the word. And immediately, you know, you receive it with joy. Have you ever come to church and you heard the word and you were like, yeah, and then you, you left and you were like, man, I, I was real joyous about what I heard, but man, I sure didn't live it out this week. The Bible says it's the condition of your heart. Your heart was hard. And so the seed, because there was no earth, it didn't develop a root system. And so it, it kind of sprung up a little bit but because there was no root, it just didn't develop. And so you got the waste out here, you got the stony ground. And then you got those that have the thorns, and this is the next one. And Jesus talks about those that have the thorn, and he talks about the cares of the world entering in will choke the word. And we do that, don't we? We let the cares of the world, we let worry, we let doubt, we let fear, we let our own desires get in the way, and it chokes what God is trying to do in our life. And then fourthly, he talks about those that hear and respond, and it's the good soil. And so he gives three types of bad ground, and then he gives one type of good. You know what that tells me? Statistically, only 25% of those that are listening to my message each week is really good ground. Now, I'd love it to be 100%. You know, you got to understand, if you come to church and you've got a brother or sister in Christ and they're growing at a, at a higher level than you, 
The problem's not the Word. The problem's not the Holy Spirit. It's a heart problem. They're growing and maybe you're not. Maybe your heart just isn't developed. Maybe it isn't good ground and it's not fully receiving what God's wanting to do in your life. Always remember this. The Word of God, which is incorruptible, it's not a Word problem. It's not a God problem. It's not a Holy Spirit problem who waters the seed. It's a heart problem. It's you. We take responsibility for our lack of growth, whether we're on the milk or the meat. Amen? So number one, we have a fallen human nature. Number two, poor listening habits. When we talk about poor listening habits, and I say this, and I'm talking to those that are watching online, and we can joke about it, and we can laugh about it, but um, I'm telling you, when it's church time, if you're watching online, you need to treat church at home just like you would if you were at church in the sanctuary. And that's a huge challenge if you're trying to, and I know what it's like. I'll get up and I'll go to the gym, i got my earbuds in, and I'm trying to listen to worship or I'm trying to listen to a message. And sometimes it's hard because I'm trying to juggle different things at the same time. And there's times I'll have to go back and re-listen to something because even though it was playing in the earbuds, my mind wasn't focused on what was going in my ear. Amen. And that's the challenge of watching church online is if you, if you don't get everything ready, if you don't prepare everything to where you're not hindered, it's hard to fully receive. Does that make sense today? So don't have poor listening habits. Number three, so the first hindrance is a fall in human nature. The second is poor listening habits. Thirdly, it's the world around us. We live in a fallen world who's anti-Christ. What? Yes. Any, listen, it, Jesus even said it, and Paul talked about it. John the Beloved talked about it and said even then there was a spirit of antichrist that was in the world 2,000 years ago. The world is antichrist. And we got to live in a world and we got to learn how to walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen? So the world around us is a hindrance. When you hear the, the, the word in worldly in church, there's a reason why we can't be worldly. Because the world doesn't love Jesus. And there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end therein is death. It doesn't matter what the source is. If the source is not the kingdom, then you're not growing spiritually. Does that make any sense? You're dealing with the world. You're dealing with the, every day. You've got to get on the world's around. Well, what do you mean by that? My wife and I was talking about this this week. She was talking about an artist. It's popular. And I, I can't believe Christians listen to this person. She was telling me about the, this song, and I'm like, wow. Oh. I thought stuff was bad back in the 80s when I was listening to my stuff. It was pretty hardcore. This stuff today, it's in your face. There's a whole, that, that's, that's the sound of the world. Amen. Jovi was going to CrossFit and she said, you know, sometimes in the background you've got to hear that in the background. And, and, and so I don't see how a Christian would willingly Amen. put that in their spirit, the world. The shows we watch, the movies we watch, the music that we listen to, the people that we choose to speak into our life. Come on. Yeah. That's a whole other lesson right now. You need to watch who you let speak into your life. Right. Right. Because it's the world and it will stop your growth. Number four, the devil. We talked about that. Obviously, he's a huge hindrance, but we talked about that in our introduction. And then fifthly, that's a big our human tendency to procrastinate. Um, well, I can really go there on that one. Some of you in here, you know you've got those projects that are still sitting in your backyard, been there for five years. I'm going to get around to it. You know, that car that's up on blocks, that unfinished project, the thing in your home. I'm, I'm going to get around, I'm getting around. I'm getting ready to, and, and what happens is we all have a tendency to do that, don't we? To procrastinate. How about our spiritual walk with the Lord? Come on. This was amazing. 2020 came, and I was like, stay grounded. That's our vision for the church. That's what God, yes, praise God, I'm going to end this year. And all of a sudden, March comes, COVID, oh! Do, do you think that something like that is supposed to put off your growth? Just because.
because the world's going through a trying season? Or is that, an, is that an excuse to not continue to grow? Don't put it off. If you made a vow to the Lord when you began this year, it doesn't matter if COVID's out there or all this other stuff that's going on. You're not part of the world anyway. We're part of the kingdom. Don't put off what you know God wants you to do simply because we're in the middle of this COVID-19. Are y'all listening to me today? Come on, we procrastinate. We put it off. And God's saying, no, don't put it off. Every believer is responsible for overcoming the obstacles to spiritual growth. We will always remain in spiritual infancy if we neglect the means of individual spiritual growth and we postpone responding to opportunities for growth that the Lord provides. Bottom line, we've got to get rid of everything that we know is hindering our spiritual growth because ultimately it is hindering our ability to clearly hear the voice of the Lord. Here, here's a big deal. Would you hear me? I'm not responsible, even though I'm your pastor, I'm not responsible for your spiritual growth, nor am I responsible for you to obey. I'm a facilitator. I'm a shepherd who leads and exhorts and guides and teaches and equips. You have to take what God's doing in your life. You can't put it off. You're the one that's responsible for your growth. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Well, let me close this. Yes, I am going to our final two lessons. Write this down because I've kind of peppered these last two points into what I've already said. Lesson three. God desires that we personally know how to hear his voice. Amen. Personally. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes um, experience in life to get to this place. Now, I um, have looked at my life, and, and I wouldn't say it's because I just wasn't growing. I just think that when you go through some things, your relationship with the Lord becomes deeper. You see God in a different light. And when I pray to the Lord right now, there's a part of me that still gives Him reverence because I'm commanded to do so, and I do. I give God the reverence because He's holy. Amen. And so i got to get my mind prepared, my heart prepared, all the things that I just talked about. But once I get to that place, you've got to understand Jesus in Revelation 3. This is where, this is where we need to get to. Okay? Get from the door to the opening of the door to the sitting down of the meal. That's when we can get to that place of breaking bread with the Lord. And sitting down with Him. I've got a picture that I had in my office for a number of years. It was given to me a long time ago as a gift. And it's a person sitting at a desk and it's, it's kind of like a doctor or a counselor and Jesus is sitting in the chair. And they're having a conversation. See, that's the part of our relationship with the Lord that a lot of us don't get. But I can sit down with the Lord and just, just give you everything. Personally, hear His voice. The thing, that, the, thing, the thing that's our problem is we come to the Lord and the majority of our prayers are a shopping list of things we need God to do. God wants to transition you from your prayer is always being, I need, I need, I need. I mean, it's not a good relationship that you have with somebody when every time you get around them, I need, I need, I need, I need, right? I mean, it's nice when you get around somebody and they don't need, need, need. They just want to be with you. See that? See, my, that's where the Lord wants it. That's when we let Him in the door, when we have a seat at the table, we can sit down. See, that's what our conversation goes from. Yes, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. Lord, and, and that's the part of the Lord's prayer. But then the Lord wants us to get to the So many people in church have never gotten to that part of their walk with the Lord. Never. They've never gotten to this place. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm winding it down, I know, but, but I'm telling you, God desires to share His heart with us every single day. 
I recognize my biblical role as a pastor and your spiritual growth with the Lord, but I'm not supposed to be your source. Jesus is your source. You've got to go to Him and have those conversations with Him. Our conversations with God have to be regular. They have to be consistent. And they must be more than requests and shopping lists. It's time for all of us to go directly to the Lord and to hear His voice on a personal level. Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. Please open the door so I can come in and sup with you and you with me. When I read that wording there where it says, Him sup, or will suck with him and he with me. What that lets me know is it's a two-way relationship. And finally, in closing, this is the goal. This is where the Lord's trying to usher all of us, going deeper, intimacy. When you're in a relationship, when you're in a marriage relationship with someone, a marriage relationship ultimately is supposed to progress to the place of ultimate intimacy. Now, because some of us guys are wired different, we're like, yeah, man, because guys are stimulated by sight and all that. I get that. It's not all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a place of such freedom and liberty in a relationship that you can be you around your spouse. And that's freedom. That's intimacy. Emotional intimacy. Not just physical. Emotional intimacy. Mental intimacy. Come on, are you all with me here today? Now some of you haven't been married a long period of time and I'm just giving you some counsel. That's what your desire should be. Those of you that are contemplating getting married or getting married uh, the first weekend of September. Uh, <laughs> and Lisa, um, that's the goal. <laughs> I love you guys. Our musicians can come out, by the way. That's the goal. Now it takes time to get there. It does. Sometimes it takes a few months. Sometimes it takes a few years. But as long as that's the goal, as long as you're striving, that's true intimacy. Jove and I joke about this. I mean, we've been married five and a half years. And the longer we're together, I mean, I could use this as an example because I'm not going to put anybody else on the spot. I'll use me as an example. The longer you're with somebody, the more intimate you become. You can now finish sentences. You can say things, certain words, certain phrases, and you know exactly, you can read the face of your spouse, you know exactly what's going on. But you're sensitive to that. That's intimacy. It's not just physical intimacy. It's emotional intimacy. Am I making sense here? Come on. That's the goal of what God wants. God wants you to be able to get up in the morning and be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that you can tell if the Holy Spirit's grieved. You can tell if the Holy Spirit is, is putting a burden on you to intercede for. You could tell if there's something in your life that maybe you did that broke the heart of God. That's the kind of intimacy that the Lord wants. More than just you getting up every day and having the shopping list. And that's basically the depth of your relationship with the Lord. God wants intimacy. That's the goal. And if that could be your goal, then you will have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Stand with me.